Well, we have seen, of course, an acceleration of a lot of existing technological trends this year. That is true for the financial services industry and fintech as well. And the CEO of Broadridge is joining us now. That is Tim Goki. Uh, Tim, we spoke uh, earlier in the year about um, you all transitioning a lot of shareholder meetings and investor presentations online for your clients. And I imagine that things have just accelerated since then. You gave an investor update yesterday. Um, talk to me about where you are in terms of demand and and how the year has gone uh, during this pandemic. Yeah, that's uh, that's right, Julie. It has um, it's been quite a year. And as I said to investors yesterday, uh, you know, this is a real moment. But uh, uh, the way that it is uh, taking the trends that you talked about and and really making them uh, happen even faster is is making a big difference for us for us all. And so. That's why it's such a good time to talk to people about what we see going forward. And uh, what we're seeing is uh, an acceleration of, of trends around people needing to get onto next generation technology. Uh, there's so much they need to do around the resilience of their technology is really increasing uh, the logic for the kinds of uh, mutualized or industry solutions for infrastructure that we provide. And, uh, and of course, it's accelerating everything around digitization, whether that's things like corporate governance going online, or those critical communications that people receive, uh, receiving those digitally instead of by paper. Tim, on your uh, so your investor day was yesterday. You put out some really solid three-year goals here. You know, how do you reach the top end of your earnings guidance? What it was about? Uh, I think the range was up eight to up twelve percent. How do you hit that twelve percent or even surpass it? Yeah. Well, thank thank you. And you know, we are proud uh, as a company that we're talking about not just guidance for. Uh, for this year, but really objectives for the next three years. Uh, this is the, uh, it was our fourth investor day. Uh, each of the past two three-year cycles, we have hit uh, those, those objectives that we've put out there. So we really try to be, uh, we try to invest and make sure that we are, are uh, ready to do that. In terms of uh, what would allow us to get to the top end of those, uh, those goals, it's really about, we have a big backlog of clients, uh, almost $350 million, which is almost more than 10% of our revenue uh, to onboard. And uh, so the speed of that onboarding uh, is certainly one of the big factors. Uh, and then, you know, these, these objectives go out to 2023. So what's happening with the economy, you know, at that time will certainly be relevant also. And, you know, Tim, in thinking about um, your business, obviously there's been challenges in, in enabling the kinds of communications with shareholders that, that management teams would like to do. But I'm curious about the nature of those communications as well. We talk a lot on this program about um, ESG and there's a new phase of shareholder activism. I'm, I'm just curious from your vantage point, um, how your technology is, is maybe enabling those conversations to happen more easily perhaps than they, they could have in a prior era. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we see uh, the future as making these communications much more interactive, much more action oriented so that when you receive a communication, uh, you can drill down and you can communicate back to, to the organization that's trying to reach you. And we really think uh, that's the future. We have that in, uh, in demonstration uh, with clients. The other big thing that's going on in, uh, in our industry is really trying to simplify the communications. In many cases, some of the very important disclosures. And, and of course, uh, there's so many, uh, such an increase in retail trading and so many new people coming into it. And there are very important disclosures people need to receive, but uh, working with regulators in the industry to make those as simple as possible so that they can be easily understood and easily digested. Tim, as a, as a corporate governance guy, that's really, uh, that business is bread and butter to Broadridge. What's your take on on IPO on the really the, the strong reception to the IPOs we've seen this week from a, a DoorDash and Airbnb? Both of them uh, have consolidated power uh, in their co-founders. Do you think that that's the right move? And how could these companies be successful public companies moving forward? You know, I think that um, the you know the biggest takeaway for me when you look at uh, both of these uh, raising price. Uh, you know, before they went went out, and then on the day having a, a huge jump. I think it just shows the incredible, irrespective of the governance aspect of it, the incredible uh, engagement by investors right now. And and certainly uh, some of that may be froth in, in in today's market, but a lot of it just signals 
uh, sort of a new generation of investors uh, getting involved in the market. And, and you know, that uh, core involvement, you know, we think is, uh, is a very good thing. Hopefully it'll turn out well as an investment for those people as well. Tim Goki, Broadridge CEO. Thanks so much for being with us, Tim. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Appreciate being here. Thank you.